Yeah. Oh, is it started? Hello and welcome to Hops and Bros. This week, a very special blend. I mean, beer. I mean, oh, yeah. I said it. Yeah, we're oh. revisiting the kind of uh, thing that reminiscent you of your childhood. Re reminiscent you reminiscent of your I'm creating oh words today because I'm blending man. words together, you know? Okay. For an open window on the crappy world Max and Chris from Hops and So Chris, what are we drinking? So today, um, as you guys know, you saw the video and all that stuff, and I kind of ramble a little bit more about it, but I just came back from California. That's true, you did, Chris. And it was one hell of a trip. I'm gonna stop here for a second. Yeah. There's nothing in life that I love more than finishing my sentences with Chris, or with the name of the person I'm talking to. Just because it's just, kind and of like, I, the only time I do it is in front of the show, and it's like, oh, I know. so uh, how's this beer, Chris? <laughs> And, and how's been, uh, things I've been doing, Max? Uh, things are good, Chris. Things are looking good. <laughs> it makes it legit as if, like, we're in a real talk it's show. It's live, we're a talk people, show you know? people, you know. I don't know, it's it's interesting. Please continue. Yeah, yeah. So, California. There's actually no one here. Should we do a spin to show everyone that? I mean, no. No? no. We can do it. You we can trust one. us. Yeah, yeah. Trust wanna, us. Do you want to do it with There's the no one? one. No, no, no. That's, that's the thing good. is that if we twist this one, it's not coming back to the right spot. Like, no, we're, we're gonna be no, fucked. no, no, we're gonna be sorry, fucked. Oh, it's already died, yes. So, yes, California, Chris. California. So, um, yes, I spent some days in Los Angeles. I did Central California and then San Francisco. But in Central did, did you wear flowers in your hair? No, because you can't remove them from the, the flower bushes. Oh, yeah, because you, when you went to the flower bushes. Yeah, and, no, like, yeah. I, it, it, there's actual, like, a signage that if says... If there's don't anyone remove. from San Francisco, uh, let us know if that's actually why the sign's there. I don't I, know. I, I believe so. It's Maybe. because of the song. I guess. I just... I just. What's his name again? Uh, Scott? Uh, I think it's... Scott, Scott McKenzie? Yeah. Scott, Scott McKenzie, McKenzie, I think. <laughs> okay, so we are terrible with these these things. I know it's McKenzie. The last name I think is McKenzie. I think the first name is Scott. So you can let us know how wrong we are in the comments below. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we're totally wrong. But... Um, as we hitched down our way from Los Angeles uh, up to San Francisco, we stopped by the fantastic little town of Santa Cruz. And Santa Cruz, um, I know them because mainly of skateboarding. Uh, okay. There's a nice beach over there. There's a really kind of like beach. She, she's a very nice lady, bro. You can't call Santa her a Cruz. beach. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Sorry. you're talking about the sandy beaches. Mm, so, okay. Yeah. Sorry, it's going to be one of those episodes. I'm just... No, all over the place. Yeah, all over the place. But um, it has that kind of nice beach vibe around Beach Bum. Uh, there's a lot of fans with like surfboards on top and all that stuff. So I really enjoy walking around there, seeing a little bit more of a like, like a good, real feel out of the beach town. Sometimes it looks a little bit fake because it's super tourist. This place sounded a little bit more through and uh, <coughs> like uh, a Brup, brup, like I don't, I don't have the right. I've always been it, very yeah. jealous of beach towns for the simple fact that every day when you go out, when you go to the beach, when you go because you're you're in walking distance usually, or at least very yeah. close, uh, you see the expanse of this just infinity. You can't see the edge. It just it, it kind of brings it down. Yeah, kind of brings it like wow, the ocean is something that's a beautiful. But be destructive and bigger than me, and a lot bigger than you, and, and bigger in, in more than just a physical sense, but bigger yeah. in a, a uh, psychic sense. And yeah. in a, anyways, it's it's big. I like that. I like beach towns, and I think a lot of people that are from beach towns are kind of just mellow. Yeah. Because it just Literally. brings it down. It's like okay, this thing that's right there could swallow you at any second if anything. it wanted to. Yeah. And it's not, but it could. So it you could. just kind of live life mellow. Exactly. Anyway, so that's my rant so, about beach towns. As me in my beach town mood, so I was lay back, walking around, I'm like, I'd like to drink some good beers. So I pull up, not untapped, but up water, which is kind of like a play on globe trotter, but it's called okay. hop, hop plotter, up plotter, hop plotter, hop plotter, a plotter like a, a plotter, like when you have like a, globe a trotter, map but and you plot your track. Yeah. So it's a big. App that gathered all the information from Trotter breweries. or Plotter. I'm not. Uh, I just forgot how to pronounce it. But it it's going to be down there in the description. It's a P. It's a P. It's Plotter. Plotter. 
Yes, yeah, so the Globe Trotters. Yeah, the yeah, Globe Trotters. Yeah, Globe Trotters. Right, that's why I was confused. So plotter in the sense that you, you can plot your route from brewery to brewery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's both explanations are good. <laughs> I just wanted to plug the app, and you kind of like fucked it up again. Sorry, Dad. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, so hot plotter. Cool, nice little app that got me to discover this brewery, which is called the Sante Ander- Adarius Rustic Ales. So Rustic it- Ales in my head just does like a I need to stop there. But they had two locations. So the main one, which is uh, the factory, located outside Santa Cruz. But this one was located a little bit more closer to downtown. Not closer to the beach, but closer to downtown. But had a nice tap room, bottle shop, and actually kind of like a nice little ambiance going over there. Nice. Um, and, and when you see rustic, which are the beers that you like initially think? When you, when you see the word rustic... I'm thinking about big... Big motherfucker feeders, you know? Sorry, that again. F- uh, fouders. Feeders, fouders. Feeders, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I'm not sure how to pronounce yeah. it, but those big so wooden you see that's usually mostly like Brett Sour. Brett and... Sour, Assemblage, uh, Classic Saison, Grisette. I see something yeah, more I saw farm-like. Grisette and Saison were the two first ones that came to mind. Now, which brings me to the question of this week. Let us know in the comments below. When you see the word rustic on a brewery, what yeah. do you think? What's your initial thought? Because, I mean, yeah. it could be a lager. Could be a lager, it could yeah. Be. Like, why not? Why not? I, I would probably not see uh, IPAs there, but it could. I mean, maybe October beers. I think they had one on tap. Uh, IPA? Yeah, one IPA yeah. on tap. So this is really nice. But I brought back from there the Nonas blend, which is an assemblage of beer clocking in at, sorry, I forgot it, 6.2%. So this is the 14th batch. So it's the 14th time they're doing this, and how do you explain it is that it's different every single time. But Which is a characteristic of assemblage, where you're basically grabbing from different uh, different barrels, right? Yeah, exactly. And then you're putting it all together in one, which, fun fact, in Ontario, it's technically illegal to do that. Yeah. Technically. But in this beer, what they're uh, also pointing out is that it's kind of leftover barrels. Oh, That's okay. That's kind of like the, um, the mindset behind it, because... Uh, it's reminiscent of when your mom's at home and she does like a grandmother does like a big lunch and she just takes everything left over and makes the most amazing. She makes something great with virtually nothing. Exactly. Which which you're like like fridge is empty. We can't do anything. And then she takes the ketchup and then there's toast and then there's yeah. whatever and she just creates this meal, this awesome meal, awesome meal that you will never recreate. Never. Because so, you're never going to be a grandma. Well, you I'm might. not 100%, 100% sure it's grandmas. full leftover beers, but I'm pretty sure it's maybe some barrels that didn't quite make the cut for other beers that were left out that needed to be blended to make another beer. And this is one hell of a beer. So pour with that nice yellow AZ color on it. Of course, you can see that it's unfiltered, but on the nose, you get it's it. Fruity. This oh, is yeah. what I like. You get a nice uh, rustic fruitiness. I don't know how to... Maybe horse blankety flavors out of it. Mm. I love that name. I love that characteristic. Uh, at the beginning, if you've never smelled those characteristics, they could be a little bit more overwhelming. But you see, you can <clears throat> see pursing through some fruity flavors like citrus, a little bit of spices, not too much. So on the nose, those are beers that I really do enjoy. But because you see that there's a lot of complexity going through. Then you first you take a first sip. And what do you think about it, Max? That's great. It's really nice. You can taste every single barrel. <laughs> Joking. So how many barrels are there in this beer? As I, I'm actually not sure. Drinking it. You can't really say, but the, the barrel flavors also come out. The oakiness of the barrel, which is something I look forward in, in uh, barrel-aged beers. Because everything in a beer is important. Yeah. But everything in a barrel-aged beer is even more important. You can't, you can't get through without Every little it. subtleties are there. And they're sometimes hard to pinpoint, but you will get the, the big notes of it. I, I think it's really... It's a nice beer. It's not the best that's assemblage right. I've had. But what I like about this one... Yeah. But it's very good. All right, okay. No, no, no let's not yeah, talk yeah. about them. No, yeah, no, yeah. I, I just looked at it. I know. People who know this... They people, know. People who know me, you know what I looked at. Because yeah. it's right there. But what I like about it is that it's a nice, easy drinking assemblage. It really is, yeah. So it's not too overwhelming, but the complexity is just there. Every single time you take <clears> a sip, you're discovering something different. And this is what I do enjoy about beer. You're out there, yes, you're thirsty, but you want to discover new flavors or you want to get to know something different. And this is exactly what I was looking for. And, and it, on your adventure going to California in general, that's what you wanted. And then you found the perfect beer for it, which is great. So full um, circle. Gotta be honest, I bought only 
those kind of beers over there. That's the way to go, man. But I drank IPAs on tap the whole way. You know West Coast IPAs, right? Uh, uh, they only do juicy IPAs now. Really? I don't know what happened. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Huh. They kind of like left out that old Neat. West Coast. Yeah. I, oh, I, Coast I, I have one they... good West Coast IPA, but I forgot where. Probably on the West Coast. Oh, yeah. I think it's at Modern Times. But overall, uh, Rustic Hells, if you happen to be around Santa Cruz, um, great, great lineup. And also, if you're a big beer fan, like they have really, 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 really good relationship with other wink, wink. Great breweries like Ill Farmstead. So let's Ooh. say you're local from uh, California and never had the chance to try out this fantastic East Coast brewery, then they have some on tap sometimes. And they have that's also a great awesome. relationship with Belgian breweries. So And dude, that's the way to go, man. That's what I love about love the brewery it. community industry in general is those little relationships you make. Because every time you meet someone from the industry and you work in the industry, any industry, you, yeah. have, you have a secret. Yeah, you have something in common that you can talk about, and you, you've got that that jumping point. Yeah, it's the secret badge, you know. You like it really is. They, they show up, my app. I work with that brewery. Oh, yeah. okay, perfect. Then come to the secret chamber, you know, downstairs, and we'll show you everything that no one else can see. And I'm sure it works for other like uh, other things, like um, wineries probably have yeah. that little thing. And even like I work in a building, you work in a building, we have something in common. Uh, but to be able to. And to have beer from somewhere else. I drove a car. You world. drove a car. Oh my that's... god, we have something going. Yeah, something oh my god. god. <laughs> I don't know if I rap. Anyways, uh, are we done? <laughs> uh, we're not done. Because I, I, I'm really uh, blown away by that beer. I enjoyed it the beers really good, over man. there, but also the ambience over there was really nice. And I heard that in the main factory, which I haven't had the chance to visit, as one L of big asses, uh, the feeders, feeders, founders. Fodders. Well, uh, another question. Let us know how to pronounce oh, it. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Fodders. <laughs> well, that's it's, it's, it's right a German there. thing, right? It's a, yeah, it's yeah. A... I'll get the pronunciation on Google and plug it right there. Perfect. Perfect. So, um, if you guys enjoy this little uh, review about the California beers, which is actually our first one from the series. In California. Yeah. There's three ones coming up. Uh, three so ones or three for more? For the next three weeks. Three more. Sorry. I've been three correcting more. you the whole episode. So, it's, uh, <sighs> so let's, sorry. Put, let's put it at four then. Because of that, we'll put it at four. <laughs> All right. So, um, uh, leave a like on the video because it just shows how much support you can give us and also how much love you have. And if you feel like it, if you if you really like the video and you like our, our, our dynamic and you like the beer we had and you want to buy us a beer, well, you can do that. If you go on Patreon, link is down there. Yeah. You can buy us a beer and you can let us know which beer you want us to find and we'll do our best to find that beer and to review it for you. Exactly. So... Um, subscribe to our channel, ring the bell if you want to get notified every single time a new beer video comes out from Ups and Bros. And we see you, yes, guys, we'll see you in the next video. Cheers, y'all! Cheers. Chris? Cheers, was Max. A good video, Chris. You did quite a good video, Max. Yeah, it's a full circle, Chris. I know, <laughs> and I, I bring a good beer, Chris. Oh, shit. I mm. ended the full circle. I guess I didn't say that. Yeah, you, it was a good beer. Yeah. It really yeah, was yeah, a good yeah. beer, man. <laughs> this, is, this is a... Should we put it in an Easter egg if someone's looking to the end? I think so. I like yeah. those. I really do. Yeah. So, yeah. Max Because might... most people are going to stop the video yeah. way before. Yeah. And the people who make it all the way here... Again, you have got a secret with us. Yeah, okay. So, let's like put it on there. Should we do it? Yeah? yeah you say it. You say it. Go. No, no, no. I thought just this section over here. Okay, okay. I thought... Oh, you thought about the other big news. Easter egg. I know what. Nope. Another video. S stay tuned for the next video. <laughs> Bye. That, that, that's the worst. That that's be, the worst. That's actually worse. That, that's it works a lot better. That, that works a lot better. <laughs>